DP, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Doing well, doing well, my friend. Just getting in. And uh, busy day. How was class today? Busy day. That's <laughs> <laughs> what's up, man. Sitting here for a moment. Had to get up and walk around for a few because, you know, just being in front of the kids just becomes so tiresome. So. Yeah, yeah. We had a couple couple meetings this week with some teachers and uh, uh, a couple principals as well today. And they were, uh, you know, it kind of broke my heart to hear this principal you know, say how her staff is it's kind of chilly here right now. Let the heat warm up. Say so just the staff is uh, really disheartened, you know, and um, just, you know, the kids have their videos on. They're not following the uh, the rules, you know, yeah. uh, video on, um, you know, uh, microphones muted, you know, the whole nine. And they're, you know, they feel like there's no way to really track their progression. Um, you know, another uh, staff member said they're in like 83% participation, which is, you know, it's not great, but still not the worst. Uh, but again, the, the engagement and participation is very low. So seeing how we can, you know, support them is going to be good. I, I uh, like I said, I have been promoting what you're doing and, and, and others that we've been meeting with. And, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that, um, you know, we can make some progression and really get some content out to support you. Yeah, I got you. I'm going to give a couple more minutes before people come on, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you have any questions, any thoughts, um, I was Ms. Harper. I know I got my, my follow-up email out to you a few days late. Um, did you um, get in contact with her? Yeah, yeah. She, I, I actually met with her yesterday evening and um, just gave her a breakdown of what um, you and I discussed last week as well. Mm -hmm. And she said, of course, she's down to see like what's going on and all. So I just texted her about two minutes ago okay. to make sure she didn't forget because I know it got to her a little um, – you know, we, we everyone just has so much to do, so I just wanted to make sure she remembered. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, and and you know, respectfully so. So I appreciate your patience on that. Um, well, while, while it's just you and I, uh, you know, there's a, a video. Oh, here she is. Here, um, there is a a video a submittal that I'll share with you, uh, and, and and basically it's it's like the introduction to who you are. I think we talked chatted about it uh, before. Uh, what high school you went to, uh, you know, what you did uh, pre and post college, a lot of things that we discussed, but we're putting that content out to, you know, especially brown people, um, you know, in the organizations that we work with. Uh, so they, they can see, oh, okay, he looks like me. Okay, I understand he you know, went to a similar high school and I can follow suit, you know, do some of the things that he's doing that he's accomplished. Gotcha. Did Miss Harper make it? Yep, this is Miss Harper Davis right here. I, um, I'm not sure if you can see her. Can you? I don't know why I can't for some reason. Let's see here. You can um, see us, HD? I can see y'all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I see you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Pleasure to meet you. And, uh, I'm Brandon Culpepper. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. EP inviting you to, to be a part of this. Uh, yeah, no biggie. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So it's you know it's it's, it's our hope to to really highlight, uh, as I said in the email, some of the professionals that are doing well uh, around the nation, and you know build some uh, best practices, some tutorials, some classes for both youth, their families, uh, and administrators to learn, share information. You know, uh, there is a uh, a video that I just told uh, Mr. EP that I was going to send over. I'll share with you as well. I uh, appreciate your participation. It's basically just an introduction to who you are, um, you know, and I'll naturally ask you some of those questions today. Uh, but, you know, middle school you went to, high school, uh, and then post high school when you went to college, you know, in your trajectory and how you made it into teaching, uh, further your goals uh, and, and what direction you can go. I, I, the thought behind that is the more content that we can share of uh, people that look like us and, and professionals in general, uh, will give uh, the young person some inspiration, some hope, some uh, similarities, things that are in common. Like, oh, I like her glasses, or I like her hair, her hair is like mine, or I want to mimic that uh, with the hopes that, you know, for something so small, they'll be attracted to you and want to, you know, mimic your uh, path to success. You know, so um, I'll send that uh, email over to you now while we're on the phone, while we're on the call here. Uh, so, Ms. Harper, if you don't mind, just give me uh, just a brief background about yourself, what grades you teach, you know, kind of what I just asked, and then yeah. uh, 
so we'll go from there. Yeah, no biggie. Yeah, so um, I teach seventh grade uh, English language arts. Okay. Um, and this is my sixth year teaching. Uh, second year actually teaching ALA because before this I was teaching theater. Um, and I was asked by my principal the, what, two years ago? And they were like, yeah, you're a great theater teacher. But the kids can't read. So <laughs> can you, you know, use all of those theatricals and make it exciting for them to want yes, to yes, be yes. able to read and write? Okay. okay. And I was like, bet. Like, I am the most theatrical person you will ever meet. And to the point where I stand on desk to read. Yeah, I, yeah. If we're reading poetry, I'm going to be a dramatic poet for that day. Like, now that we're remote, I love dressing up on camera. Mm -hmm. Like, literally one day I was like, I saw a beret that my roommate had, and I was like, let me borrow that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beret on, and I was like, I'm a poet today, y'all. Every okay. time you hear me say a great line, y'all gonna snap. If y'all don't snap, I'm done. I'm I'm ending the poem. <laughs> I'm not gonna feel it. And the kids are like, bah, 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 bah. okay, okay. Yeah. So I started reading a poem, and they were like, mm, 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 mm. I'm like, y'all feeling it? Like, I had the sunglasses on. Um, so I'm super dramatic, and so that's my background, right? Um, I was actually born in California, but me and my mom, raised by a single mother, moved a lot no reason for that except for the fact that my mom is very much a woman who doesn't like to be in one place yeah. and that kind of low-key same for me yeah. um so we moved a lot and so for middle school is the one constant my middle high school was consistent um and so i stayed in maryland during that time and i went to a school called greenbelt middle which is in greenbelt maryland uh and then i went to a school called eleanor roosevelt high school uh, which is also in Greenbelt, Maryland. It's like right, it's the connecting high school. Um, great high school, huge. I went to a high school where I graduated. My graduating class was like 700 students. Okay, wow, that's pretty big. Yeah. Which is big for high school. That's right, that's right. Like, you, I don't know everybody in my graduating class. <laughs> like, that's how big it is. Like, there are people that I'm like, when they were planning a reunion, I was like, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen you. Mm -hmm. And our, and I mean, our our school was huge too. Was, I think it was like four floors, massive, no windows, which I was always like, why are we got no windows? Uh, we had like the outdoor little bungalows. Like we had to go outside to class. Good times. Um, so I did that while I was there, heavy in the theater department. Like that was my place to be. Um, I think one of the earliest memories I can remember of me thinking about teaching was because a teacher of mine was a white teacher at that I uh, was my drama teacher and they were planning a trip to New York to go see some Broadway shows and like we had to pay I think like three or four hundred dollars for the trip and I was that I was I was a single parent we also were helping my grandmother out so she lived with us and my mom had like lost her job at that time and I was just like well I guess I'm, I'm not even gonna ask my mom like I'm not even gonna say nothing like this is not even a thing and my drama teacher pulled me aside one day and was like I still haven't gotten your stuff like you got to come on this trip. And I was just like, yo, I can't. Like, we don't have any money. My mom's going to say no. And she was like, that's, that's what's holding you back? No, you're coming. Let's go. Like, don't worry about it. Like, there is no price. Like, you have to come. Like, and so she was like, one of the main reasons the first time I got to experience a, like a true Broadway show and lived in New York and got to see New York City and like all the possibilities and we, and it was just like an amazing experience that made me just fall in love with theater once again. But also, remembering that impact of that a teacher has on and like um so fast forward college I <laughs> go to school in Indiana again I don't like to be in one place so I was like I ain't never heard of this place where's Indiana at who lives there who who lives over there but I got a full ride scholarship to go so my mom said that's where you're going that's right like, I don't care like you're not going anywhere else I had plans to be at NYU and she was like you see these loans <laughs> you're bugging you're okay. going to the free one that's right, that's right, that's right. So I went in super naive because my high school was very diverse uh -huh. um, and very naive, especially about, like, racism, right? Like, I was like, oh, I'm with the high school with white kids, and it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And then going to Indiana, where it's, like, oh, a very red state. Yeah, yeah. Like, y'all really, <laughs> y'all are bold. That's right, that's right, that's and, right. And having that experience was, like, very eye-opening, and, like, I actually saw, like, the discrepancies in education. Like when I have friends who who were from like Chicago or things like that and seeing like um like learning about how, how they were growing up 
and like seeing how their schools and how they would talk about how their high school didn't do these things for them, but they still made it regardless. And I'm just like, and then hearing the same white kids that are like, I've never been around black people before. Wow, and I'm wow. like, you really live in a bubble like that. Like, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, y'all have been having like the latest technology in your schools. Y'all never had to worry about books. Y'all never had to worry about stuff like that. And seeing those in the same place was very eye opening. Mm -hmm. so I was like, no, education is actually really messed up. <laughs> Right, right, right. I was like, not everybody has access. Not everybody has the same opportunity. Mm -hmm. And even in college, people didn't have the same opportunity. Even in college, there were professors who would not let, like, not give recommendations for black students for certain programs mm -hmm. because they didn't see that they were worthy enough or didn't think that they could do it or thought it would be too hard. Mm -hmm. I got a story sister who was denied something for Princeton. And then, like, the professor was like, no, like, I'm not going to write the story because I don't think that you get in. So she just went around, got somebody else, and got in. Wow. I was like, we're grown. Yeah. Yeah. I'm paying. I'm paying for you. Yeah. To help me. That's Are you right. gonna let me know? That's right. That's right. So like, I just remember my senior year of college was definitely a big because uh, I graduated in 2014, and so there was the Mike Brown and everything that was happening in America, and like it came and bled into our campus, and a lot of the black students were being very vocal, and that's when I saw like people that I thought were cool with me. I was a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I'm on the cheerleading team with you, and like you're telling me that I'm bugging for feeling this way. I'm like, people really showed their true colors in my senior year. Mm -hmm. I, I lost some friends because I was like, no, this ain't it. This ain't it. This mm -hmm. ain't it. This is racist. Stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, and so after that experience, I was like, yeah, no, I don't want to be in a space where I have to continuously educate black, white people about why they shouldn't be racist. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Um. I was still doing theater. I had an opportunity uh, for a summer to teach theater, and that was really exciting and really fun for me. And I was like, okay, this is cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the time I graduated, I still was kind of like, I got this theater degree, and I really don't know what I want to do anymore because I've done everything in theater. Like, I went to New York for a semester and did an internship with a scenic designer because I was into that for a moment, and I was just very wishy washy. Okay. Um, and I remember applying for Great Oaks as a, a tutor. Okay. So I, made, I just need like, I was like a year of service working with kids. I was like, let me do this. Like, this was fun. My best friend had also just got a job in New York. And I was like, if I'm working in New York, like I could still hang out, it could be cool. Mm -hmm. um, started as a tutor at the school that I'm actually still at now. Um, and I was just tutoring kids at the time, made such great connections with so many of the kids to this day. like. My first kid that I ever tutored is in college now, and I'm sending her care packages, and I'm checking in on her, making sure she's good, um, because we know all about, like, getting, like, a lot of schools' missions is, like, get in on the college, and it's, like, once they get there, it's, like, okay, bye, right. and it's, like, no, they're not graduating, <laughs> like, the support can't stop there, we have to continue oh, to check in on them, like, mm -hmm. make sure they're good, because mm -hmm. there are so many students that are going to drop out, because yeah. their schools might have prepared them yet, and when they get there, they're overwhelmed, or they're not, they're not, they don't feel that support anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just remember when I was a tutor being very bold and I was a tutor at the time. So no teacher certification, no, none of that. I went up to the principal at the time and I said, I want to teach a uh, theater class. And he looked at me, little white man, yeah. Jared. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'm sorry. First of all, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they just come to my office. Like we cool, <laughs> like no meeting, nothing. Like literally it was like, mm -hmm. And he's like, who are you? And I mean, luckily I had a good reputation. Um, so like some of the other teachers were like, no, she's the real deal. Like she's a great tutor. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he sat me down. He was like, all right, come back with a plan. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, fine. Say less. I already have it. I already have it. Mm -hmm. so, all right, I'll come back with a schedule. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll come back with the, I'll come back after, you know, making it an appointment. Okay. Okay. Um, and I talked to him about why I want to do it, what I thought was missing from the school. And he said, this is crazy, but okay, uh, you can get one class, like I think it was like three times a week, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. And I did it. The kids were in love with the class. They, I would watch them like I mean, come around the corner to see what we were doing because we were loud because it was naturally acting. So they would hear a lot of screaming or they'd hear things and be like, oh, gosh, what's going on? It's like, we're just acting, you know, we're just yeah. doing a bunch of weird games like actors do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after that, I was like, yo, this is fun. I want to teach this full time. Um, but at the time, the school didn't offer like a full time teaching position. So I started looking elsewhere. 
my best friend was like, oh, you can just come to one of my schools in New York. And I was like, say less. It's done. I uh, did an interview, got the job there. And I just remember Great Oaks trying to keep me. And they were like, yeah, no, don't go. And I was like, but is New York a B, they're paying us? Have you seen like, what they're offering me? Like, y'all are dumb. I was like, I'm used to not having money like that. This is like a big girl salary. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking it. Like, what what do y'all have to match that? Yeah. And I told them the number, and they were like, yeah, we're not. I'm not going to lie to you. They were like, we're not going to lie. We are not going to match that. And I was like, then I'm not going to be working here. Right, 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 right. Um, and so I left, and I just, oh, man. I remember Tyler first saying, he said, you can go. He said, you'll be back. <laughs> I was like, I'll be back. I was like, y'all really got to ego. Y'all yeah. bugging. I'm not coming. Right, right. Granted, here I am back. Um, because something that I, I like about the school I'm at now is how many black people are there. Right. At my old school, it was a white principal, a white male principal. Um, very strict with the kids, very militant, very much like a prison. Like, kids are walking on tape. Mm. Kids had to be doing something. If they didn't do it in that moment that somebody says it, they get a consequence immediately. And I just thought it was really, it was just too harsh. They're 10, they're, they're 11. So I was naturally a, re a rebel. Right. I was like, I teach theater. Why, my, my, sh my class shouldn't look like an English class or a math class. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this isn't, this is too constricting. Like, I am a free mm -hmm. spirit. I don't like being told what to do. I, I do my own thing. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not doing that here. Right. I was like, dang, I need to, I need to find a new school. I need to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when the principal of this current school was like, hey, uh, my mother be principal of school, come. And I was like, bet, yes, this is what I needed. This is my out. <laughs> Tell me when. When can I when can I apply? He's like, started now. And I was like, bet, like I um so then I've been there and I've been at Great Oaks for like the past four years now. Okay. Okay. Um and again, like I said, like I just really truly believe like I love that the fact that the staff looks like the kids. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like such an underrated thing. And I know that there are some people who are like, No, kids need to be exposed to different and for what? Because you have the same kids in white neighborhoods that I went to college with who told me that they've never been around black people. Mm -hmm. It works out for them all the time. Sure, for sure. No, you're exactly right. And the, the, our entire lives, we're going to deal with people from all walks of life. You know, it, it definitely has its, uh, its important, um, you know, being able to communicate with everyone. Uh, but I think you, you, you hold a valid point that, you know, the people that teach me look like me. Uh, the aspiration of becoming where they are, you know, that's our introduction videos. Like, wow, she's teaching, she's making money, she, you know, she's here every day, she wants to help me, and there's nothing like that, you know, mirroring that that type of support that you may or may not have in your own home. So uh, that's a great story. So you only left for one year. I left for two. Two years. Huh? Uh, my my the school that I went to paid for my master's degree, so I was like, I got to finish it off. That's what's up. <laughs> Up, right? I was like, I'm gonna stick around so I can get that degree from y'all, and then after I graduate, I was like, okay, you're right. Okay, okay, that's what's up. No, that's great. That's great. So, so now you're currently you're teaching English. Yeah. Okay. And what is that? What is that like in comparison to uh, the theater? I mean, I, I'm sure you say you're standing on desks, things <laughs> like that. You know, when you're in the classroom. Um, so transitioning that you've been doing teaching English for four years or two you? years, two years now. Because I started at Great Oaks teaching theater for the first two, and then that's when they were like, "Actually, come, come to DOA." Okay, okay. So this is my second second year teaching theater. Okay, uh, and and so what is that? What is that like going from the classroom setting? You know, first time really teaching English, although you can technically teach English when you're in theater because you're reading and you know comprehending you know the words, et cetera. Uh, but but what is that transition like from teaching theater to teaching English, and then from teaching English in the classroom uh, to teaching virtually? Yeah, I think teaching from going from the theater to English, it was natural. Okay. It, it it was easy. Mm -hmm. I naturally love to read. Also, like I'm a reader. Mm -hmm. Um, I reignited my love of reading when I was teaching theater. Like I would see kids. We encourage kids to read books, and I like bonded with a group of kids uh, who were so into reading. Mm -hmm. And I saw that, and I was like, wow, they're really into reading. And like we just bonded over the fact that we all liked to read. And so we started our own little book club. Okay. And I remember we read The Hate You Give together. And then when um, the movie came out, I had an opportunity to screen it early. Okay. And I was like, y'all want to come to the screening with me? And they were like, I was like, yeah, the girl's going to be there too. So y'all get to meet her too if y'all want. Yeah. And they were like, you lying. Yeah, I was yeah. like, no, I'm dead serious. Come. 
And so I just called the parent, and the parents was like, of course you can take them. I'm like, it's in New York City, y'all. I'll meet me at the train station this time. We'll probably be done around this time. Come pick them up at this time. Oh. Cool, cool, cool. We went. They saw the movie. We was crying together, bawling out our eyes together. Got to the end. They got super nervous when they saw Amandala, and it was just so funny because, like, they said nothing. Like, I was like, so we did all of this, and you got up there and was like... <laughs> <laughs> and then she just moved on because you really was just like right right sure. and they were like oh my gosh and i was like i can't believe that you did that no 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 um and so i feel just to say right like i think that there are so many elements of the theater that i can bring into the english language arts realm right yeah. reading is for me it is an adventure it's storytelling mm. it's you seeing the world through a, another person's eyes that you may or may not relate to mm -hmm. And then thinking critically about that. And one of my favorite things is when I have them thinking critically about a text. Um, there's this idea in education like that. Everything has to be one way. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think I believe that. Mm -hmm. And so when we're reading something and they're analyzing it critically, I don't understand what's wrong with the kid expressing it the way that they know how. That's right. Mm -hmm. Some of us might say that it's informal, but the kid understands it right through the, the language that they're using it's appropriate for the context so like for example we're reading a raisin in the sun right now mm -hmm. and there's a character walter who is the worst mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the kids will literally say that they're like yo walter is raggedy walter is trash walter is and then in the same realm they can tell you that walter is misogynistic mm -hmm. and know what it means right right for sure all of those mm -hmm. like, i will allow you to write all of that in your written response yeah. Tell me that he's raggedy. Tell yeah. me that he's misogynistic. Mm -hmm. Tell me that he's I have a kid who literally roasted him in an exit ticket. Like literally, she wrote, first of all, biscuit head. Like she just went in on his hairline. And I was just like, but she's right. Like this yeah. is how yeah. you feel about like you're so into the novel that you feel like like I felt like this was a personal attack on mm -hmm. the character yeah. because she felt it. Yeah. Like she read it and was like. This guy is a piece of work. Yeah. She was like, I remember the one, my favorite line from that exit ticket was, um, you want to make money, but your mind is stuck in the basement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> wow, his mind is in the basement. He yeah. really does have this basement-like mentality where he's stuck down there when he's trying to be up here, but he's still holding himself back. She told, she wrote in there, she was like, you're too busy trying to appease to the white man and be under his foot all the time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Walter is not a real person. Who are you being feel about? This is a character from a book. <laughs> but he he still holds a lot of similarities of people that you know we watch on television, people that we actually have in our lives. That we yes. So you're right. Being able to, uh, I mean, it is comprehension. You know what I'm saying? They're comprehending, but they're they're speaking in their own language. And I and I love the fact that you're saying, okay, yeah, they can. They have the understanding of what misogynistic is, what you know, and and, and saying it another way, but still can um, still can speak, you know, inappropriate. In accordance to maybe someone may not know what uh, you know, uh, douchehead, douchebag, or, or whatever <laughs> slang right. you may use, you know. Exactly. So that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And is that something that I mean? Naturally, I'm sure you're encouraged. You're encouraging that, you know, uh, to get that participation from them. Yeah, I need it. Yeah, you gotta engage kids the way they want to be engaged. And like the good thing is, like, you can teach kids time and place. You can teach kids what they need to have in that moment and what they can exclude from that moment. Mm -hmm. They'll get it and they'll do it. Mm -hmm. They're like kids are sponges. That's right. <laughs> right now, mm -hmm. everything matters, and so. I'm not going to shut you down because of the way you are engaging with the text. Mm -hmm. Because that will make you never want to engage with the text again if I tell you that's wrong. Right. Then you're never going to want to participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's how you comprehended it. And I'm going to take that and teach you maybe some other ways to get that point across as well. That's right. So that you can build that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, that, that that's your experience uh, naturally in the classroom, and you're able to, you know, manage, uh, you know, now, now transitioning from the classroom to uh, to virtual. You know, how 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 is that, how are you still having the same, you know, impact, and uh, how are you still able to engage in a way that, you know, your kids are responding, you know, such where they say, okay, I get it. You know, I want to be here. I'm showing right. up. You know, how are you doing that? I think a lot of it comes from a lot of our teachers at our school are just real. Mm -hmm. 
Like I, I just was talking to one of my best friends and like she sat in like I, I was I was talking to her and I was like, wait, I have to go. I have a homework help club. I was like, you can come if you want and see like me to help the kids with homework. She was like, yeah. And she came and we were reading part of our play together. And like after the call, she was like, wow, you really are just like you're Jasmine yeah. who just teaches. Yeah. So I think part of it is like kids need to know that like we're human mm -hmm. and we are there and we are real and people that go through things just like they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also I have high expectations for you. Yeah. I also would treat you the way that I would treat my own child if I had a child yeah. or a sibling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well like I want what's best for you. Mm -hmm. And I think it just comes off as very authentic. Mm -hmm. I think it's it comes across that way because we care about how they feel. We talk to them. We get to know them. We know their parents. We know some of their siblings. We have social media. A lot of teachers at my school made teacher Instagrams to connect with kids. And I know a lot of teachers do not want to do that right. because they're like, but it's illegal. But that law was created back when. Yeah. We are in 2020. That's right. Why is education still stuck in 1950? That's right. Make it make sense. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't for me. Yeah. If y'all don't get on Instagram and stop playing these games, because you want to know why the kids are in your class because they're scrolling through their Instagram. Right. So let them let them see you on their Instagram. That's right. That's right. That's right. I like. Then that. maybe they'll come to your class. That's right. That's right. That's let right. them see you engaging on Instagram, and you don't got to follow them because mm -hmm. I don't need to see a bunch of little bucket. Well, I don't know. I don't want to know what you do outside of school. You yeah. can follow me though. Yeah, for sure. You can follow me all you want. Mm -hmm. And you can engage with me and laugh at something that I might post. I might post a funny meme, yeah. and it might be about how you don't do your homework. And then y'all write in the comments, LOL, that's me, that's me. Yeah. And I'll comment back, well, don't let it be you. Right, right. Do right. better. Right. 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 Roast them a little bit. You got to have a personality with kids. Mm -hmm. You can't be, you cannot get up there. And I think something I learned from EP was like, you got to love the content. EP always says like, kids know if you like what you're teaching. Right. How you going to get up there and teach ELA and you don't like to read? I'm not coming to your class. You don't even like doing the thing that you're trying to tell me to do. Yeah, yeah. How are you going to expect me to come to your math class and you are sighing and huffing and puffing every time we got to do a problem? Right. How are you going to expect me to um, love science, but you're coming unprepared and you don't know what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. It's those small things that we don't think kids pick up on, but they're very aware. This generation of kids is the most aware. That's right. When I think about middle school, I don't remember a thing. I don't, I don't know anything I learned in middle school. And these kids can tell me so much from the latest show that popped up on Netflix because they just be in the know and they're like check these things out on Netflix that just came out whether or not it be something about stocks whether or not about it be something about racial inequality like they are they have access yeah. they're feeding into it That's and right. we need to figure out how we can help support that and to make sure they're looking at the right things and going in the right path and going on the right path and doing the right things with that information and using it for good and not for bad because you know we get every now and then you got a kid that is an evil genius. That's right, that's right. I have one in mind specifically. I'm like, yo, you really are diabolical. Like, you could take over the world. You need to go this way to win it. Right, right. We're, like, you can scam people, but don't scam people. Just make money another way. So don't scam. That's right. That's right. Figure out how to place that energy in the positive. I'm like, do it some other way, but don't do it the illegal way, homie. Yeah, yeah. No, it's I, like, yeah. You're right. I mean, the, the, the legal way, the effort that it takes to do that, if he applies it elsewhere, I mean, you get... You'll you know, be unstoppable. That's right. That's right. That's well, you can start a whole company and have people doing things for you. Yeah. The way your mind works. Is that good? Yeah. I was like, you really out here selling us Google Homes that you got off of Amazon with somebody's credit card. <laughs> True story. True story. Out of his backpack. <laughs> opened it up. I was like, you want a Google Home? And I was like, what? from where? He on it. So how do you get all these Google Homes? And why are you so? He's like, it's Christmas time. I know you need to get some gifts. I was like, I'm not doing this with you. I'm not buying this from you out of your backpack. This is what we're not going to do. <laughs> He's on it. He's on it. I, mean, I was like, how? <laughs> he was like, don't worry about it. I was like, where's the receipt? Seventh grade. He was a seventh grader. Yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. Yeah, I believe no, I mean, um, no, I mean that all the things that you're saying are, you know, exactly. I mean, that's the reason I was excited to to meet Mr. EP, and you know, I'm sure he told you I was I'm thrilled to to meet him because of the 
you know, I got a chance to hear uh, his class and his engagement with the youth was like phenomenal. I, you know, I, and I kept talking about it. And I bugged Melissa. I was like, set up a meeting. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, naturally, you know, he actually said, hey, is, is this open to, you know, other professionals? And I said, yes. And he mentioned you right away. So, um, again, I'm, I'm very thrilled to, to have you both. You know, the the – Today's conversation, like I said, I'm sending you the email with um, the, the video. If you can just film it, uh, it's like three to five minutes. It's really quick on your phone horizontally. So, you know, we don't have those borders on the side. Uh, we can get that out. We do record all of the uh, conversations that we have because we, you know, I think um, it's just so important that people see see greatness, you know what I'm saying? And see that it can be done, you know? And here, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with you saying, that I believe our our school is successful because the teachers that are teaching our kids look like it. I mean, that, I think I've heard that people are a little hesitant to, to to say that, but I think people need to be vocal, and perhaps that will help other young people, you know, decide to go the traction of, of being an educator, um, you know, just by meeting meeting you both. So, you know, the the purpose of today's conversation is really seeing, okay, we'll, we'll have that video, and then what what can we do to support you all? Uh, and and really make you an expert in um, not just teaching, but you know this virtual workspace that we're in for education. Um, so I don't know if that's um, you know setting up like webinars where we have multiple teachers you know on board and and we're discussing different subjects, whether it be math, you know, or just you know classroom engagement, you know, how to uh, organize a class. You know, uh, Mr. P and I, you know, spoke, and, he, and you do the same thing, I'm sure, you know, talking about these are the expectations of each, each and every class. You know, a, a lot of teachers have those expectations, but I'm sure you're not surprised that a lot of them don't get the same response back from the kids just as you all do because of, you know, one thing you mentioned is a relationship, the relationships that you have with the young people. They trust you, you know, and they're going to do, do it. Do, they're going to respond accordingly. So, um if we could just like quickly just kind of brainstorm on on if we had some topics, you know, someone's giving us a million dollars here. They're saying, hey, uh, or I have a million dollars for you both, okay? And I'm saying, uh, hey, Mr. EP, uh, Ms. Harper Davis, uh, I want to, you know, highlight you all and highlight your best practices. And we are going to do videos that are associated with that. Um, what would be some of those topics? What are the things you think you're doing well that we can, you know, teach others uh, not just teachers, but parents as well. But I guess let's start with teachers. What what are you doing that you think is making a great impression on the kids and other teachers can follow suit? I think um, one of the topics that I would definitely and I encourage and something I've been trying to get my schools to let me do, Loki, is how do teachers understand that teaching is performing? Yeah. And te- making them take acting classes. And yeah. giving them acting lessons and making them play those warm up acting games. Because every day I get on my screen, I am a performer. We are putting on a performance. Our students are our audience. Mm-hmm. And like naturally, like most theatrical performances, you want your audience to walk away with a message after looking at your play or your musical. They're supposed to take something away and then share that with somebody and encourage them to possibly want to come and see it. It's supposed to be word of mouth. And a lot of teachers miss out on that. Like, this is an opportunity for you to be performing, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So part of the performance is what is your character? How yeah. do you how do you talk? Okay. Are you monotone? Yeah, yeah. Of course they're going to sleep. Mm-hmm. If you talk like this the entire lesson right, and you yeah. never change the infliction uh-huh. of how you talk, it's something as like teaching people how to literally speak. Mm-hmm. When I'm teaching, I exaggerate the things that are important. Right, right. It might be like I will whisper something Mm -hmm. because it's important, and that means that you have to lean in and literally listen. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite things to do is like start whispering out of nowhere because kids would be like, "Wait, right? Wait, I didn't hear that." And I'm like, "Oh, you missed it. It was important. You need to be listening." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 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 literally something as simple as like teaching them literally how to talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the most important part of when you're when you're teaching? And a lot of teachers also talk too much. Okay. Like when learn when to shut up. Yeah, right, for sure. Like I know EP has kids that tell him to like stop. Like we don't want to hear from you right now. Like let us do it. And okay. I had kids do that for me when my when a lot of my classes um, when we were in person more so. 
Um, now that we're remote, it's not as much, only because we know that everybody does have the best Wi-Fi and the lag be kicking in strong. And so discussions aren't as big as I want them to be. But when we were, when we were in class, we'd have our circle, we'd have my talk ball, we'd just toss the ball. And every time I would try to come in and insert myself, because I wanted them to get to a point, they would be like, uh, we're getting there. Mm-hmm. Stop talking. Okay. And I was like, uh, I heard you say, yeah. let me say that. Yeah. And we used to be able to just sit and listen and watch kids go. Right. And it looked to that uh, observer like, why aren't you? And it's like, because I don't have to. Okay. Do you not? Are you not listening to them? Right, right, right. No doubt. You hear that? No doubt. No doubt. And so getting teachers to understand this is all about a performance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and using tricks. And if you have to be, and you have to be animated sometimes. I'm not saying you have to be like, like if people tell you, we are two different people. Right, right. I am so animated. Right, right, right. EP is not as animated, but the thing is, you'll notice we get the same results. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. So I'm not saying you have to put on this big show, Mm -hmm. but I'm saying you have to put on something. Right. You can't just walk in there and just be your same old self every single day. Right, right. Give them something to look forward to. Have some kind of, you know, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Banter with them. You can be as great banter with his kids. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's lit. You, you know, stay tuned. You guys are doing good. Uh, Jordan, meet me in the breakout room. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is. It's valid. I mean, that's, I think. I think uh, teaching its performance is a topic all on its own, and I think that there are there are professionals. Like I, I mean, like I told E.P. earlier, I spoke to a principal today, and she was just like, "I'm disheartened." You know what I'm saying? My teachers are disheartened. They're, you know, they don't know what to do. They're not getting the same response as you all get. You know, so uh, perhaps even if the kid, you know, if the kid doesn't have their camera on, you're telling the teacher to be animated. They get on one day and and, and you got on a or whatever. You know what I'm saying? A mask, a this, whatever. Uh, that they may turn their camera on, like, wow, you bug it. You know what I'm saying? But you know that they're, that, that you're getting their attention. You know, when you talk about tone, you know, it's like music, meso forte, you know what I'm saying? The piano is like, as you're, yeah, talking, crescendo, oh, they're yeah, crescendo. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, they, they respond to that. You're yelling. I'm over here by them all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I hear he, he's a breakout room. I'm like, is he talking to me? You know what I'm saying? So you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I get that. And I think that, that animation and, and, and being within character, and, and you know, I, I also feel like, um, you know, with that performance, okay, you are naturally theater, you're dramatic, that's that's great. Everyone doesn't have that, so I like that you said, you know, you have to figure out what's your space, what's your lane, but then how do we, how do we fill you back up as teachers, okay? Because that's taking a lot of energy. For you, it may be very simple. For others, it may drain them. You know, they just don't have that in the background. So how do we feed you? to make sure that your teaching performance is always quality. You know, every time you get that chance to step up on stage, whether you have one person in the audience or you have your full class of 15 to 20, um, that you're you're still encouraging the games. How can we support the teachers in that way? Yeah, I think for me, because thinking of, thinking of it as a performance, I mean, unfortunately I am not the best model for that, for this, yeah. because I, most performers, right, when the day when the show is over, they take it off. They leave the stage and they leave the character there, yeah. and they go back to their real lives. But this is my real life. Yeah. <laughs> I am this on, mm-hmm. even outside of teaching. And Ethy is smiling and laughing because yeah. it's true. Yeah. Like yeah. as dramatic as I am in front of children, mm-hmm. I am the teacher that you will catch at seven a.m. in the morning blasting High School Musical, no doing the choreography in the hallway no at seven. Yeah. As people are writing and they're just like, what? Yeah. Even yeah. Hap- <laughs> it's the, it's too early. Right. It's too early. Mm-hmm. Well, you having that energy, think of it this way then. You having that energy uh, and you're teaching someone else to how to have that energy. How do, how do I feed that student? Okay. Because you're looking at these other professionals, professionals, they're going to be your students. How do you feed them? How do you feed them to make sure that your peers, these professionals can you know, give the, you know, the, the outstanding performance each and every day. You know, what do you do? Because there, you know, our mantra is, as you once were, we are now, as you are now, we someday will be in Pep Nation. Okay, we we're all kids. We're all going to be adults. So, you know, many times when I'm having a, a board meeting or I'm working with kids, I teach, you know, you teach the 
treat the adults just like you do the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause we're all human, you know? So how do I, how do you feed your kids so they do let that energy out? Mm -hmm. That's what we'll be doing for adults. You mind if I jump in yeah, a little bit? Yeah. Um, I guess for like, like teaching teachers or teaching adults, we've been, uh, We've took on something recently this school year called Leader in Me, okay. where we discussed the uh, seven habits of highly effective uh, it, people or something like yeah. that. Um, and a lot of that information was, you know, useful for me. I was going through something terrible in October, like just not one thing, but, you know, a lot of things just hit you all at once. Yeah. I had to start realizing the things that I would teach the kids in the morning actually works for me as well. Mm -hmm. So for a teacher or a person to be like really effective, they got to understand like who they are at first. So I'm thinking of this one habit we had called sharpen the saw. Okay. I kept telling myself, I got to sharpen the saw. Mm -hmm. I got to eat healthy again. I got to get back to going to sleep and I got to get back to exercising. Yeah. I added those three things back to my life and I feel great yeah. every day. The kids th this morning, we, we had this Friday song and the, yeah. like I sang, I sang it the entire time. I said, Hey everyone, I'm about to annoy the heck out of y'all. I'm not going to stop neither. Yeah. People kept coming. I'm like, it's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah, it's yeah. the end. Of the and I just kept calling kids out and they just sitting there like, Right, right, right. And I kept calling all of their names, and they just kept coming off me. I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> he gonna get his sleeping on, his sleeping on, and all the kids are just looking like, yeah. Miss EP, you 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 had the smoothie this morning? Yes, I did. Yeah, right. You worked out this morning, Miss. E yes, I did work out this morning. How you feeling? Did you work out this morning? Yeah, you know, right. small things like that. Okay. So, um, I think once the educators or anyone in a working world, once they realize that they can be healthy, you know, themselves, they can start, you know giving that to other students yeah. or giving that to students overall. Yeah. So I would ask myself, like with the teachers I'll be working with, or mm -hmm. if I work with some, mm -hmm. where they, where, where are they in like their lives? Mm -hmm. Are you happy with what you're doing right now? Are you happy coming to work? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we, we have a lot of professional developments as well, whether we take a lot of information from it or not. Yep. Some people are just unhappy with the career path they chose. They're unhappy with decisions that they've made in the past and they take it out on um on others so when i was taking notes just now as hd was speaking i wrote down uh humanity how do you feel about things um my first year as a teacher everything had me upset because like i said last week i thought when i talk students listen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i took things personal right i took everything personal when a kid came back at me i went back at them and i'm like wow my, my supervisor had to keep stopping me like listen you lost the whole class time because you were going back and forth with this student. Yeah. And I was like, all right, it took me a whole school year to realize this. Stop taking things personal from the kids. Mm -hmm. Stop taking it personal. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is just a one moving piece that led me to caring for the students a little differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Student come and start cursing, cursing me out or something like that. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You all right? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Chill. Mm -hmm. We could talk later. Mm -hmm. Um, a student cursed. She thought she was on mute recently. <laughs> she thought she was on mute. Her name, uh, Stephanie. You probably see, seen her, Miss Miss um, Miss Baker. And she was writing something, and she was just saying a B word the entire time. I don't know who she was mad at. She was right. They was on the exit ticket to everybody quiet. I'm like, what up? Uh, hey, like it was going that much. I had to like keep trying. To, I was like, Steph Stephanie, Stephanie, yeah, yeah. hey, and all the kids like kids laughing and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hey, Stephanie, you listen, you can't use that language here. But my response could have been, I'm going to give you a negative. I'm about to call your mother. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, I, I didn't take it personal. I'm like, I was a kid. Like you, Whatever you do at home is what you do at home. You just can't do it here, okay? And she was really upset. Yeah. Like after all the kids left, she was crying and everything. Don't tell my mom. Don't. I'm like, Stephanie, you have nothing to worry about. People say what they say. So it's like me trying to stay human. I got to be empathetic. Like, and for me to be empathetic, to, to, to help the other, uh, another human understand that I understand them, I have to understand myself. Yeah. I got to understand myself. I understand that I have bad days. And I'm like, if I could have a bad day, all of my kids could have a bad day. Y'all yeah. have bad days. What, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Like, tell me. If you don't want to talk about it now, we'll talk about it. All right, you know what? You got to be strategic with it as well. Like, finish telling me about this, but just knock this exit ticket out real quick. That's the best. That's the best one. Just, 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 just tell me about it okay. after you do that work. Yeah. Like, go ahead and just, like, get that done. Like, you got to, like, make it like it's not a big deal, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got, like, seven minutes left. Go ahead and finish that up in seven minutes. Yeah. Let me know when you're done. 
and, and, and they feel it. They understand. They're like, all right, you really want to hear me out, and I'll make that time at the end. And if we run out of time because I want them to take their five-minute break because that's all they have, I'm like, listen, you got five minutes, and we're over two minutes, so you got three minutes. Tell me the beginning of it, and we'll talk about it later. Now the kid's like, all right, he want to know. Whether the kids forget to talk about it later or not, they start to trust me a little differently. Yeah. So I'm not – in my first few years, I had to be taught that. My my supervisor had to help me realize all of this. Like, he kept talking to me. He kept giving me feedback every time. And I approached him, like, I, you always tell me about, you know, the things that I'm I'm doing wrong. And he like, that's okay, though. And this is why I, I tell you this. You know, I want you to become one of the best teachers out here. Every time we have something, you can have a perfect class. I'm going to find something that can make it a lot better. And I was like, okay, I had to realize that. And um, I'm not sure if a lot of teachers have that kind of coaching or encouragement overall. So I wrote down authenticity as well. HD mentioned this earlier. Okay. A lot of teachers must understand the end goal. Like, what's what's your goal? Like, what are you just here teaching, or do you really want the kids to understand your subject, mm-hmm. which leads into liking the subject overall? Mm-hmm. I want all of my students to have a mathematician background. Yeah. They're like, why you want us to become mathematicians? I didn't say that. Right, I right. want you to have a mathematician background. And I remind them, like, you might become a physicist. You might become a philosopher. You're going to be a writer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you go to college or you go into a job and they say you got a mathematical background, they like, this person thinks differently. Yeah, yeah, no they got their master's. They're going for their master's in biomedical sciences, but they got a minor in mathematics. They yeah. think differently than everybody else who, who's trying to come into this program. No I have to do mathematics. So I know the end goal. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, you're going to say this word right because yeah. I know where you got to be. I know, like, the struggle is going to come later. Yeah. And I also put, like HD said earlier, like, you got to understand the content. Okay. I'm able to fall off track. I'm able to say, you know, everyone, I'm not doing a lesson plan today. We're going to do my lesson plan off the top of my head, and we're going to compare it to their lesson plan. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Mr. EP, the key point we made was only one word different from the from the lesson they gave us. I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, we, we got this. Mm-hmm. You got this. And the last thing that I was thinking about was treating, like, I'm going to go back to it, actually, treating the kids like humans. I apologize to the kids. Yep, yep, every time. I I say sorry, I say thank you. When I know I said something wrong, when I know I flipped out or something like that, and I don't do it privately. I don't pull them aside and say, yo, listen, I'm sorry. Students be like, I'll, I'll yell out, I'll flip out, like, hey, such and such camera is off. I asked y'all to send me messages. Y'all not sending me messages. You'll be removed. Yeah. And then I call somebody out and they like, Miss EP, I sent you a message. Yeah. And I got to scroll back and I'm like, um, you know what? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, such and such. My apologies. I didn't see it. You know, so please forgive me. You forgive me. And they like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's, let's get back to it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like going from zero to 100 and coming back down. Like they, they see a little bit of animation from me, but <laughs> it's, it's working though. Like today we had a scholar who yesterday we had a scholar who uh, everyone was agreeing with him in his group work, but he was still upset that no one was saying that no one was listening to him. Came into there and I flipped out on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if this was the beginning of the school year, he probably would have been upset. He probably would have been like, eh, I don't want to do this anymore. But he understood it went from, you can't do this. You got to stop whining. If you keep going down this path, this is what's going to happen, yada, 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 yelling, flipping. And then I was like, all right, you get what I'm saying? He like, yeah, yeah I got you, Miss EP. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll check back in like two minutes later. Okay. And he, I came back, and they just went back to it. But I had to build them into that. Yeah. So the end goal was, I'm going to make sure your mind is tough. I'm going to make sure you can take this criticism. I'm going to make sure you're human. I'm going to make sure you get respect. And I remind the kids and I ask them every day, if you find any adults in this program, in this network that's disrespecting you, let me know. Mm-hmm. Email me. Mm-hmm. Call me. Mm-hmm. Because and when I have my, my TFCs, the, when I speak with the fellows that's working with my kids, I let them know every day if something happens or something goes wrong with the kids. And the kids know this already. I'm going to come after one of them. Right, right. You know, so the kids know in their head, like Mr. EP, he got us. Yeah. He got us overall. They can call me. They can. They pulled me into a Zoom meeting earlier and was letting me know that they wanted new notebooks. And they were very specific about the notebooks. They yeah. showed me everything and said, we, we don't want the skinny ones like this, Mr. EP. We want the nice, tough ones that got the big rings on it. Was showing me. I'm just sitting there like, can, 
can I please have my Friday back now? Like, we, <laughs> we, we, we just wanted you to know because we overheard you say, yo, get us whatever we need. So we want new notebooks. I'm like, all right, I got y'all, whatever. Hold on, hold on. So they, they email me, they call me, they text me like, Miss EP, join my Zoom real quick. Yeah. But that happened over time. So once the teachers realize that they can be human with the kids, you don't have to be robotic. You don't have to go in there monotone like uh, HD set. Mm -hmm. it, it gets easier. Don't take anything personal from the kids. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, really, really, it sounds like you know removing yourself and making sure that moments, yeah, you know, <laughs> unique situations. But it's not common. Yes, sir. You know, a, a lot of kids they begin to trust me. A kid fell asleep in my class yesterday. Mm. Mm. After everyone left, I sat there with the two fellows and we just looked at him like, "Come on, man, right. what are you doing?" And yeah. he just laughing like, "Miss CP, I don't even know." I'm like, "What? What can you do to make this better?" Right. And he thought I was going to yell, but I'm like, "What can you do?" He like. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm like, that's all we can ask for. Just don't go to sleep in class no more. Like, that's not a good thing. Okay. You you look like I started gunning him. I started, you know, making jokes about, about him after that. And he was cool. He came back. He didn't go to sleep. Sure. So they're humans. And I think that's something we could definitely approach. Like, I think that's going to be the biggest eye opener for a lot of teachers. You can be human and you can treat them like humans. Sure. And you are, can still... And it doesn't make you any less. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you don't lose respect. In fact, you gain respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I've never in my entire teaching career have have ever, and I can confidently say, I've never had a kid cuss me out. I've never had a kid talk crazy to me. Yeah. Like done any like talk crazy to me to the point where I'm like, who are you talking to? Yeah. I can probably think of one kid where I literally said, who are you talking to? Yeah. And then they took a step back and was like, my bad. Yeah, I forgot who I was talking to, and I was like, "Okay, as long as you know, you forgot." Right, right, for sure, for sure. And a, a part of that is like by treating them as if they're human beings. Our first reaction when a kid doesn't do something or does something wrong or does something that we consider to be bad should not be yell. Yeah. And even if that is your response, having that moment where you apologize, mm -hmm. I'm good for a flip out every now and then. If I got too frustrated, if I'm too hot, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about one time a class really had me high. I threw some papers, and I was like, "Y'all all got F's." Yeah. <laughs> I threw the paper. I said, everybody, get out of my room. Yeah. And all the kids was like, mm -hmm. I had a kid, the last kid I left was like, dang, Miss HD, I'm sorry. And it was like a kid that did nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, dang, I just did this in front of your whole class. Right, right. And then I had to walk with them to the next class. I said, can I, can I take a moment? Yes. Can I take a moment of the, your, your science time to talk to them real quick? Mm -hmm. just, yeah. I was like, I apologize. That was, that was unprofessional. I was like, that was childish behavior. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. And they were like, it's okay. I was like, no, it's not okay. No one should do that to you. That's right. It's not okay. You worked hard. Those papers, you had writing on it. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to pick all those papers up, and yeah. I'm going to grade them and give you the grade that you should get. Okay. Unless it's blank, you're getting your zero. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> right now, and it's just like letting them know, like, they know we get frustrated. They can see they like, like, you're human, they're human. That matters, like having that element, but it doesn't make you any less than. It doesn't make you less, like, respected. It doesn't make you less of a good educator. It makes you a human being. At the end of the day, we're all just human. No, it's great. I, so, I mean, uh, naturally, I think that would be uh, – that's a great topic to, to start with, you know, uh, uh, teaching is performance. Um, and then as we build up, so so what I'll do is I'll send you these notes uh, for that topic. And, and I think that – Together, we can, you know, from the notes that I have, you know, create questions and create, you know, um, subtopics that, that go along with that topic that helps you get to that point. Um, I think that the, the last piece that I that I think that could be a great uh, video for us to to work on is classroom management. You know, naturally, that's number one. People are, um, I mean, you, classroom management obviously goes with performance. But how to actually manage a classroom virtually is is naturally what attracted to me to Mr. EP's performance. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's managing the classroom. I haven't seen anyone manage a classroom like that. So uh, if we can just chime into what respect is your Friday, and I got about nine minutes left until the hour hit. But how do you manage a classroom? Uh, and and starting from a to Z. Again, we don't have to put it all at this point, but when I send you that, then we can add to it. I'll create a spreadsheet. It'll have questions. So it'll be more like Q&A like this. We're going to focus on those two topics, but then you won't, I won't be hitting you with blind stuff. You'll already have yeah. the question. You'll, you'll be the expert. And that's, that's, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, not to go off, but when you talk about the authenticity of this, 
you know, the reason I'm doing it is because I want to help uh, the kids. At the end of the day, like, if I can help the teachers, you know, with you all, then they're going to help the kids. So, yeah. classroom master, how, what, let's talk about that for uh, briefly. How can yeah. whoever wants to start? I think big part of classroom management, right? What are your expectations? And how, how often do you follow them? And you gotta start, if you don't have any expectations, the kids don't expect, they won't do anything. Like, if there is no set, you know, this is what I expect from my classes to look like. We use the chat for this only. We come in, our cameras are on. If your camera is off, you need to notify me within the next, the, the very, the moment you enter the classroom, you need to be private chatting me that there's an issue. Because I, I, I am aware, right? Like, I get it. I get that some of you are, um, maybe you woke up and you look crazy. Bullying is real. You know, kids love to take a phone out, take pictures of kids on Zoom, and you don't want that to happen to you. I understand that. I get it. I get it. Let me know. But just also know that my expectation for you is your camera is off. You have to participate you, like twice as much. Like, if I don't see you participating, it's a problem. You're going to get zero for participation. Okay, uh, so so uh, with that, then we'll go to you, Mr. E.P. So if you're saying your expectations when you enter classrooms, uh, microphone muted, camera on, sitting in front of your camera, et cetera, if the kids aren't doing that, how do you reinforce that? You know, how do you tell them that, how do you get them on, on that camera? Or, or what do you do? Because you guys are in a unique situation where the kids are, uh, they're all from Oak. You know what I'm saying? So they, you have a relationship with them. Some of these programs that we're at, uh, this is the first time the kids have ever um, met this teacher before. So these are your expectations you're setting. Uh, how do I um, ensure that the kids are going to do that? Parents. Parents. I, I wrote down parent. Um, I wrote parents. down account accountability for the parents and the students. Um, it's at, at some point last school year for the scholars that HD has now, I let the kids know, and this is the time that I lost all behavior issues. Um, I let them know how it's a privilege to be where you are. Like, and I explained to them how other uh, countries and across the world, you know, people are fighting to just be able to sit in a seat to learn anything. So I let them know, like, to be in this class, you know, it's, it's a privilege. If you want to leave, just take a step outside. Just I'll put a chair out there. I won't even I won't even tell the deans you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So all the kids looking at each other like, man, I actually got to do this. And they finally like get it in their head. It's, and, and I'll tell them it's not even reverse psychology. Mm -hmm. If you want to go, yeah. step outside. Yeah. And then I, I, one kid, well, what's going to happen if I step outside? I can't tell you what's going to happen today, but I can tell you what can possibly happen next school year. Mm -hmm. Next school year, you're, you're not going to know any of the content. So you're going to fail. And then once you continuously fail and you're pushed forward, um, that's how a lot of people, you see them outside, you hear them outside every day. I'm like, yeah, it's, don't they look your age? Yeah. Those are kids who were pushed ahead and they weren't prepared to be pushed ahead. Yeah. And they were in unique situations where they just didn't go to class. They got used to it. Now they're outside yeah. during school hours. But, um, definitely an emphasis on parent expectations. Uh, when we talk about it, uh, similar to how I'm doing now, I'm teaching a fourth class at a different campus. And, of course, new kids, they're like, no teacher, I'm not following anything. Right. It took about two to three days, but the kids understood, hey, we do a lot of group work here. This is the expectation when it comes to group work. Go in there, give them continuous feedback. Some kids in the original room, how come I'm not in a, in a breakout room? Well, I can't see you. I don't even know who you are. Right, right, so right. you can sit right here, and you don't have to do any work. As a matter of fact, your parent home? Right. Yeah, she sleep. Let's, let's go talk to her. Right. Let's she sleep. Wake her up. Let's go talk. Yeah. And then, you know, it's still like maybe one or two scholars who say, and I don't know them enough, and I only have one more week with them, who say, like, oh, my cameras don't work. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I don't have time for it right now. Yeah. But let me let you know what's going to happen. You're not going to be part of this group work, yada, yada, yada. They're like, well, I don't know how to get it. I'm going to send you the link right now. Here's how you get a new laptop. When you get all of that, you can come back. You'll be welcome with open arms. I'm not mad at you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, I need you to get it together. So once I speak to the parents and – a teacher recently was so surprised at how I communicated with her because a student put the Chromebook in the bed and a parent was like, wasn't even fully, I'm, I'm going to say she was dressed, 
but she was in her night clothes basically and she looked upset yeah he looked upset because he he clearly didn't know he shouldn't have did that right right he just sat it right in front of her she was open her eyes was like right, right, right. right. and the teacher that was assisting me he was like he turned his camera off so i was like <laughs> i'm like good morning um well here's what's happening with your son yeah. this is the expectation and it's first thing she said was he don't even listen to me and in my head i'm like so i can understand why he's not listening to me right. so when i got my opportunity i spoke to him privately and i just gave him small 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 little things to follow right. the next day we started following it turn my camera on the next day after that i turn my camera on and participate next day day after that mr ep don't even have to ask me to do it so I had to play a different role in that unique situation, but it's definitely accountability in, in all ways. People got to understand and parents got to understand or caretakers, guardians, this is a privilege. Or if you're not going to teach them and I'm going to teach them, they got to follow my expectations or they're not allowed here or they're not allowed to participate in all of those, you know, areas. And of course, parents would have or students will have some kind of excuse like, oh, we don't have this. We don't. Well, let's find out how to get that to you. Let's let's find out. What do I need to do? I asked my supervisor recently, can I drive the Chromebooks to, to certain kids? And he like, no, we got it. We got it. Now that I'm putting a flame under you, yeah, y'all got it. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the expectations. If, it's, if there's an excuse, let's let's fix it together. Okay. okay. That's fantastic. Uh, now, the um, what is the standard? You know, expectation that you all are using. It's naturally each class is going to change. You're going to, you know, have different expectations than H H D. But how? What are the standard for Oak, or that you just know in general for the expectation you have for your kids in your classroom? Cameras on, uh, mics off. We started off with the whole can't. I'm, I'm gonna raise my hand or use the nonverbal features and everything. But it's realistically that takes too much time and I don't have oh time to keep scrolling through it. I said, listen, if you want to be heard, you better say something. Yeah. Yep. The kids fight to be heard. Okay. Yep. They're like, you know, them, the is, they go, X coordinate, X axis. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it, it sounds like, were they right? And kids like, yeah, they're they right. I didn't hear it. Well, everybody try again. Everybody's talking. Cool. We got communication going on. But yeah, definitely uh, cameras have to be on and the students in my class know that if they have to turn their camera off, send me a message. Yeah. Let me know why it's off. Like HD said, some people have bad uh, days and everything. You got a bad hair day? Send me a message. Cool. Go fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. But still get that camera. Yep. Yeah. And, <laughs> and definitely need to see at least, I want to see at least down to, to their mouths or to their nose. Some students still have a problem with that. Yeah. But ideally, I went from forehead to chin. <laughs> I, ideally. Right. Ideally, I want to see your whole face. But, yeah. you know, yeah. you have you have, you have have these kids. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> on purpose. Be better than these kids, though, because oh, I'm yeah. like, first of all, I don't want to see your ceiling. It's not even clean. You say that all the time. <laughs> I don't want to see your ceiling. I'm like, your ceiling is dirty with the stains on <laughs> the top. Not. Stop. And then it's <laughs> <be> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's no better, but that'll do. <laughs> Wash your face. Yeah. Dusty. I mean, it's yeah. keeping it real, but you have that relationship with the kids. Now that's you also important, right? Out. You know, I'm a first time teacher. I'm not gonna be like, go wash your face. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or oh, you yeah, the parent gonna come at you. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. so, so that's good. So, so managing those expectations is what I have. I, uh, I have, you know, especially letting parents know they're accountable. Um, is this like, uh, with that, are we doing weekly follow ups with the parents? I know Mr. Yes. You talked about that. Um, you know, how you, you've now transitioned to having the kids, you know, build up to have that authority to go talk to the parents themselves mm -hmm. rather than you having to do it. But but what is the what is the communication with the parents, you know, and then how do you, you know, set those expectations for them? Yeah. Well at Gradoes, I think what is it? We're supposed to do four phone calls a week. Okay. Um, like that's the Great Oak standard. Myself, uh, I will blow your phone up. Okay. There's a, one student in particular who camera off every class. His mom is at home most of the time. And I'll text her immediately. Yeah. And I'll say, I'm removing him if he doesn't do it. And she's like, okay, I'm going to phone him. And I'll say, he has five minutes. That's it. To get it together. He don't get it together, I'll remove him. Mom knows that. Mom knows I'm removing him. And that's that. That's the end of that conversation. I'm not dealing with it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand why everybody else can do it, and there's something wrong with you. Right. Right. That's not how it works here. So yeah. he gets a text. His, his mother gets a text every day. I will, I probably text, I probably do about... 10 to 12 parents a day. 
Okay. As it might be something like they didn't come to my class today and I looked in power school and they were in everybody else's class. So they purposely skipped my class. So when you see this grade going in the grade book, they got a zero because they chose not to come. It's not because they were absent. Right. If you're absent from class, I'm not gonna give you a zero. I can't do that. You weren't there. Right. If you're absent because I and and I know that you were in everybody else's class and I know you logged into the Chromebook that day and you're watching a YouTube video, right. Right. you get the zero. You're earning it during my class time. You yeah. watched the movie. That's right. That's right. You played yourself, and I let the parent know that that happened. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Right. Sorry. That's not the expectation. You're not watching a movie. During, like, you have my class every day at the same time. Like, you can't say he doesn't know what time class is. Mm -hmm. Or you can't say that he didn't know we had a class. I don't cancel class. Like, what are you saying? Are you are you encouraging yours? I know that's my thing Ms. Baker was doing. She was doing follow-ups with the class as a part of her AmeriCorps. Are you encouraging your assistants? That's well, she has a standard. You have a standard of how many times you have to call Melissa or who you're who you're speaking with? Yeah, once a week. Once a week. With the parents. Yeah, because they and they are also assigned like certain students. Oh. So they don't have to call like multiple students, right? It's like they have their students that they need to talk to. They don't need to talk to everybody's parents. Okay. And so like that's really cool as a tutor because you have more personal like a more of a connection with that parent because you're talking to them once a week yeah versus me like i might text the parent one week and then not text them again to like three weeks later if i see something happening with the student. Okay. okay and normally i'm quick like if i see a kid that was doing well and then i start to see a decline i'm like hey so-and-so hasn't been turning their homework yet. so-and-so has been struggling with coming to class on time i don't know where they are but they need to get in front of a desk like let me know what's going on and let's figure out how we get them there. That's right. Yeah. I'm like, tell the kids to get up. Like, it, it's so many, it's surprising how so many parents are just like letting the kids do whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had to tell the parents, she's like, she keeps saying she gets out early and I just see her on the phone. And I was like, you should take her phone from her. I was like, she should have the same expectations in school at home. Take her phone for the day right. until school is over. If you're noticing that she's on the phone in the middle of the day during class, right. Right. take it. For sure. For sure. Yeah. You're the parent. You pay the bill. You literally pay that bill. Take it. Yeah. The kid got so tight with me. The kid got so tight with me. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I sat there with her mom on Zoom. Because her mom was like, should we do a phone call or a Zoom? I was like, can we do a Zoom meeting so we can all see each other? Mm -hmm. So I can also share my screen and show you the work that she did the day that she claimed that she had the opportunity to leave early because yeah. she finished her work. Yeah. Showed her mother an empty document. Her mom was like, this is the work that you done? She was like, I didn't have, I didn't have time to do it. So I turned, I just did, I just turned it to her. She's like, but she said, don't leave until it's done. Right. You had all the time to do it. You left. Right, right, right. I said, don't worry. Yeah. I took her phone. She took her phone. She does all her work now. Okay. So, I mean, you, you, yeah, you, you have to be all in. I mean. You got to uh, talk to the parents and don't be scared. Like, the parents aren't scary. You're going to come across a parent that's going to be OD, and I don't do that. Right. If you want to come for me, you're not going to do it on my phone that I pay the bill for. I will hang up on you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're not going to talk to me crazy. Mm -hmm. Not when I'm trying to help support your your kid. Mm -hmm. I can't care more about your kid than you care about your kid. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Right. Right. You got to care. Mm -hmm. You coming at me is not going to change the fact that your kid wasn't doing work. I'm letting you know the kid doesn't do work. I'm sending you pictures of the fact that the kid doesn't do work. You want to come at me and tell me, oh, the work's too hard. Oh, this is this. Oh, okay, you're one of those parents. You want to make excuses for your kid. So when life gets too hard, they just going to give up? Cool. That's not a great way to think. And I'm going to keep telling you that your kid isn't doing the things that need to get done. And maybe at some point you'll make the shift. Yeah. And maybe at some point the kid will make that shift. Well, at least you're talking to both. So they, they can, you know, at least hold each other accountable. Yeah. Uh, and those parents are very far and few in between. A lot of parents love being communicated with. Yeah. yeah. They rather over communication than under. Because they don't like when their kid fails and nobody told them. That's right. That's right. Hearing about your kid not doing homework after a week. 17 of school and nobody told you you have every right as your parents are black right yeah right. something's wrong right so something's mr repeat okay yeah so 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 with that the, the communication mr repeat in the beginning it sounds like you're doing more um you know parent talk and, and then you have that expectation so you're also doing the the four phone calls uh but then um you're employing your young people to say okay you go talk to your mom dad and 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 get it done are you talk are you then talking to the parents less or are you still just around um are you you know over and beyond you know with with your parent communication i'm uh i'm, I'm talking to them way less okay. um 
just to to help the students understand like there is an accountability part and it's not even just helping them academically uh i didn't communicate certain things with my mother who worked a lot so um i wish i did and i wish someone pushed me to do so so i could have you know had less run-ins um some students they're benefiting a lot from it because now the parents are starting to ask like oh that's cool i i, I remember doing that in school yeah. having that conversation the kids seeing a different purpose and what they're doing like, oh, yeah, we, we can read this together. We can do this together and things like that. And I feel like um, even if we aren't communicating with the parents as much, by the time they get to HD next school year, they already know how to check their grades. They know how to click on a certain grade and observe why they're failing or why, why they're passing. And then they take those conversations. So if HD ever say, well, I'm going to call your parent. And some students should be able to say, I talked to her already. She knows already. So oh it's, it's just going to be a follow-up, like, hey, I just – and that's what I do now. I ask the kids, like, did you make that call? They're like, yeah, all right, I'm going to just call to follow-up. They're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to go tell her right now. I'm going to go tell her right now. I thought you made a call. Come on, man, you can't be lying to me. I'm not going to tell her anything crazy, but just imagine if you tell her, it would be better than me telling her. And they like, you're right, Miss EP, you're right. I'm going to do that. I'm yeah. going to do that. Um, I mean, I don't be having nothing super crazy, but I do love that <laughs> idea of that. Yeah. Uh, being more uh, accountable of talking to their parents. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite things is having those kids that are in the same room as their parent mm -hmm. helps. Yeah, yeah. When they're on Zoom, those are my faves. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I just did it the other day with Cam. Yeah. I said, that's your mom back there? Go get her. He said, <laughs> yeah. I said, tell my best friend. I said, hi. And he was like, that's not your best friend. I said, tell, your, tell my best friend, because I talk to her every day. Tell her, I said, hey, best friend. Yeah. And he goes, and then she comes to the camera, hey, what's happening, miss? You see your guy in the class? I'm like, mm-hmm. All the kids are like, dang. Your mama, <laughs> your mama and the thing you talk. I'm like, oh, you thought that was it? I said, Elijah, that's your mom back there? Yeah. And then I, Elijah mama come and say, hey, baby. You act like I don't have your parents on deck. Right. Yeah. But it's like I don't use that as a threat either. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be, I, I want your parents to be aware of what's going on. I want it to be to the point where your parents are invested in care. And so I love, like, I like communicating with parents more so now when the kids are killing it. Those yeah. are my favorite things to do. Yeah. And parents will come back and be like, yo, thank you so much. They can't stop talking about your class. Yeah. I'm there with them. And it's so engaging. You make it so much fun. The book that they're reading, I love hearing you guys read it out loud. I remember reading it like, parents are like, I remember reading that when I was a kid. And they're encouraging their kids to keep going, even though if I only assign like, 10 pages. I have a kid who was like, my mom made me finish the book. Mm. I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I was like, all right, don't uh, don't spoil it, please. Yeah. Please don't spoil it. She's like, yeah, my mom, my mom and I were reading the play out loud together. And I love stuff like that. It should yeah. be like that. I, we did a project, and a kid um, did a podcast for her project and, ha and interviewed her mom mm. and taught her mom something that she learned. Okay. Like, taught her about the Dred Scott case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, have you ever heard about the Dred Scott case? And her mom was like, I don't, I don't really know that much. And she's like, you want me to, I'll tell you about it. I know a lot about it. Yeah. And I was like, and it was this podcast interview and it was like her mom was so engaged and wanted to know and was asking more questions and the way that the kid like literally knew everything. And it was like, could you imagine what the world would be like if it possibly, if he won the case? Mm -hmm. And her mom was like, wow, I never thought about that. Wow. She's like, there's so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. He would have gained his freedom. Yeah. He would have been one of the, like, she, and like, it was just like such a cool thing. And I'm like, that's the energy I love, like engaging your, Engaging the kid, yeah, but engaging a parent will go a long way. Getting parents to be to, to help support me so that we can help support the student matters more than anything. Like it's the best. And so with, with all the phone calls you might make about people not turning their work in, the minute you see them doing like start turning their work in, let the parent know. Yeah. Yeah. This is the expectation, this is what your kid did. And have them keep this up. The good phone calls. Yeah. Those good phone calls go a long way. I do that with Sebastian because he failed my first trimester, but this trimester, and even the kids, like, see him actively engaging, and they're like, go, Bash, you're killing it. Like, you must have had a good night's sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you awake today. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. No, this is, this is uh, I think this is what it's all about. I will send over these two topics uh, along with some questions that relate to the notes that I have. 
Um, you know, I, I love the fact that, like I said, these are recorded. We want to use these videos. It's great that I don't have to worry about how to spell you all's names because your name is there at the bottom of the screen, you know. Um, but, you know, I thought what was really cool is listen to Mr. EP talk about, uh, actually, both of you all. Both of you all were like, ah, I like that. I'm going to use that. Oh, I like that. I'm going to use that. That's what this is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all work at the same school. Y'all have a relationship. But yet and still, we're sitting here talking about how to educate you. And both of you guys are like, ah, I'm going to take that, put it in my toolbox. And there's so many teachers that don't have that. So I, I think mm -hmm. that this is going to be really a breath of fresh air for so many people. Uh, and I really hope that it makes an impact because I don't know about there in New Jersey and Newark is Newark is very similar to, to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I mean, we're at a, we're under 50% participation. Part of the reason I moved uh -huh. back to Milwaukee was 75 was 74% at that time uh, of black males were dropping out of high school. Like 74% of black males were dropping out of high school when I moved back home. So, you know, I mean, that's real. So, uh, you know, you can only imagine what it is now. Uh, but I, I really, truly thank you both. Um, uh, hopefully we can do this at the same time, same place next week, but really just build upon uh, these uh, tutorials. Uh, that we're going to create and then push it out. And I encourage you to share it, get other teachers involved. You know, that may be interested. Uh, and, you know, uh, you know, I want to be a conduit. You guys are the professionals and I just want to kind of push you forward. And I'm in the, in the background, but I already know some principals right now that, you know, once we really get this organized, I'm going to send this to them so they can send it out to all their staff for professional development. Why not? You know what I'm saying? You guys are in the mix and it's real what you're talking about. And if they can follow, we'll, we'll be better off overall. Did you have any questions for me before we uh, wrap up for tonight? No. Nope, I'm all set. Okay. Well, I really appreciate the energy. Uh, if I don't have your email, Ms. Harper, I'll, I'll, uh, if you can send it to me, um, uh, Mr. EP, that would be great. And... Um, and then again, I'll send over these these topics. We'll build some questions um, to really highlight your efforts, and then start promoting. Start promoting you both. Uh, uh, um, if you haven't already, once once I get your email, send me over those social media uh, links. Uh, perhaps we'll create some separate social media links for you all, where you know we're really again um, creating you as, as the expert. Uh, for for virtual engagement with youth and families, I think it'd be really good. So, you know, we're just, it's some branding involved in here. That's that's where I'm I'm pretty good at. And uh, you know, you guys are all the brand. I'm just pushing it. You know, so I really appreciate this. And again, as I told Mr. EP, you know, as we grow, as we continue to to push and, and show content and get other teachers involved, you know, I know that this can you know have, be lucrative for us as well, where people are paying you to to come and speak. And, and and even as, as Mr. P said, teaching at another school, if we continue to go this direction, I, I truly believe that, you know, the best of the best won't just be teaching at their school. They'll be teaching for multiple school districts um, and, and, and education, the value of education is going to increase um, more than it is. People are going to be based, paid based upon merit and not so much uh, filling the gap. That's, that's what we're doing. We're filling the gap. That's how education's been. You know, you're just putting people in place. I mean, I, I got so many teachers that have come through our program and the school just hired them on to, to fill a gap. Oh, you're a fifth grade teacher in one of the roughest schools in, in the U.S. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, right here in Milwaukee. And this person doesn't have an education background. And you're throwing them in the worst. So, you know, uh, <laughs> again, this is really good. So uh, thanks again and look forward to uh, speaking with you both soon. All righty. Thanks, Melissa. Problem. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> HD, you have Melissa in your class too? No. No. Uh, no, I, well, the way the fellows are set up, it's by grade. Okay. Uh, and so because I'm seventh grade. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. All right. Well, thank you both again. And, and I'll look for your email and then we'll, we'll send out the correspondence. All right. Have a good night. You too. Good weekend. It's Brandon. Stop recording.